is Lisa from Life in Layouts and today I have for you sketch number four from the sketches for the six by six paper pad class from Allison Davis over at Scrapbook Generations and I am going to be scrapbooking these photos of Eli when he was at the Halloween store trying to figure out what he wanted to be for Halloween. The sketch calls for a bunch of squares on the layout and of course it's a one page layout that I'm going to turn into a two page layout and some of the squares have photos on them and then some of them are decorated. I ended up actually using all photos and just decorating each one of the squares or most of the squares uh, and I really love the way that this layout turned out. I did use my 3x3 three three square die just simply because I have a horrible time making square cuts so it's just easier to use a die. So here I'm going through the photos and you can see I'm, I actually took some photos out because I just had way too many photos. We were having such a good time at this Halloween store like trying on all of the different Halloween costumes so most of the time I highly doubt that he was actually trying to actually pick out one of those Halloween costumes but it was fun to like try on different things. After I cut out all of the photos and the squares. I thought it would be cool to add some distressing using my um, distressing tool from making memories or we are memory keepers. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but it's basically just like a little knife and it like roughs up the edges. I did that for all of the squares. And then after I did that, I found the center of the layout and I'm going to start with my squares there. That's really the only like rhyme or reason to it. Like I was just thinking that I would start with the center and, and try to work it out. So I use my T-square ruler and making a nine by nine grid is actually not that hard once you get into that first center panel. I just use my T-square ruler to make sure that they were all lined up. So you can see here that I'm just moving that around and I did make sure that those squares were straight because the pictures that I'm going to add on top of them, I'm going to add them in a, like a whimsy fashion. So some are tilted and uh, some are like a little to the left or a little to the right, a little below it so that it really kind of helps stands out. And, and so you're able to see some of the paper, but not all of it. So these photos, um, we have some different glasses and hats. Um, of course, I'm the one that's taking all the photos. So I did make sure that Eli took one photo of me and that's right there in the center. Um, I always recommend at least getting one photo of yourself on a layout. Uh, it may not be the best photo of you, but sometimes your kids are gonna wanna see that when, when they're older. So um, at least try to get uh, you know in front of the camera for at least one photo and even though you can't see my face in this one um i'm covered up by a mask it's still a, a cool process that you know so he can remember that i was there with him the one behind the camera taking all the photos my title is going to be spooktacular costumes and uh that is a very long title. I was really surprised that I had all of the letters for spooktacular. Uh, and I really like this font. It's a real thin, glossy type font. I think I obviously picked it up on Tuesday morning for a while, so I'm not sure if I could uh, recommend it below. But once I got my title down, I used the chipboard piece of costumes and I felt like it was just missing something. So I did go ahead and add a border sticker right below the title so that um, it had uh, like a shelf to sit on. And I think that that really helped the title stand out even more. And then so once I have that down, I'll go ahead and add this chipboard piece that says costumes right below it. And then I'm also going to obviously use some liquid glue on them because we know that chipboard letters uh, don't always stick. And even though, even though I put those liquid glue on, there are some that are still coming up. So I might have to put those down some more as well. What I decided to do was use this collection from Pebbles, but it doesn't have a lot of embellishments to it so I do have like a bag that I keep where all of my extra Halloween stuff goes just simply because sometimes the colors don't really matter because you're using like a lot of blacks and purples and and those colors you can because it's Halloween you can tend to mix it up so all of these embellishments come from like all of my leftover Halloween supplies 
And my thought was that for a majority of the photos, I wanted a like a larger piece. So you can see there like over on the far right hand side, I have a, a ghost. And then for one of them, I used a, a little boy dressed up as a skeleton. Um, and so I used a dinosaur and a skull. So kind of like a bigger piece to really ground it. And then I used a bunch of the smaller pieces whether they were word stickers and those word stickers were things like Halloween, too cute to spook, spooky, haunted. I actually used spooky twice and I'm okay with that because it's just a fun layout with a bunch of different costumes on it. Um, I did go ahead and use that border strip again underneath my photos on the right hand side. So that photos on the right, the two larger photos, that's actually his Halloween costume. So there's a picture of him in the store with him having the Halloween costume on, which he doesn't really have it on. He just kind of has it through his arms, holding up his thumbs, you know, saying this is the costume. And then when we got home, the photo on the left is, is he's actually in the Halloween costume. I had him put it on um, and so I can get a photo of it. So that's that photo, those two larger photos. So it was really fun to, you know, see all the different costumes in, in the store and then have the one costume that uh, he's going to wear. And this was back in 2019, so. He's uh, definitely a lot littler in these photos. I really liked that um, October uh, moon with the cat and the branches and it fit just so well right above the photos. I went ahead and added that chipboard piece and then um, a little black hat right next to it and it just all nestles well with the ghost and the pumpkin and then the bats at the top. Now I'm going through my enamel dots. I have separated my enamel dots by color and I'm loving the way that that's working. I have been able to really start to use a lot more of them than I was before because I felt like I was going through a bunch of different packages trying to find colors because most of the time when you buy enamel dots there's like four or five colors on each page. So by separating them, cutting them into strips and putting them in containers by themselves like with all the colors, it just makes it easier to pull out that color and stick it down and being able to use a bunch of different enamel dots. So I used the enamel dots in black, and then I also had these like purple glittery stars, and I also had them in orange and black. So I added those throughout the layout as well. Over on the far right hand side, I am gonna journal over there, and I'm just gonna talk about, you know, trying on costumes and going to these pop-up Halloween shops that are you know only there during the Halloween time, and, you know, pulling out the costumes and figuring out what we want to be. So uh, here is my final layout and I will link below this sketchbook even though the class is over. Um, it's still a great sketchbook. I highly recommend this sketchbook especially if you're wanting smaller photos um, or smaller papers. Um, I used a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. I was just using mainly um, like b-side photos or b-side papers so it doesn't really affect the six by six so you can use them with six by six papers or you can also use them by 12 by 12. all right everyone if you enjoyed this video if you wouldn't mind giving it a thumbs up i'd really appreciate it if you haven't done so already and you want to see more double page layout inspiration make sure you hit that subscribe button thanks everyone for watching and i hope that you have a scrappy day